Everybody has a, everybody. Everybody has a story. Phone is winning. Winning is phone. Something memorable that occurred on Halloween. Perhaps this happened during your childhood, and you've repressed the memory. Perhaps this happened as a an experience as a parent, or perhaps just as an adult. Let me give you an example. While you consider yours, three one two six forty four sixty seven sixty seven. This was sent in by Andrew, a foul. <laughs> Who says, while attending college in Michigan, 1995, my fraternity brothers and I decided we wanted to get a pumpkin to display on the front porch of our house. Having no money to buy a pumpkin, we decided to do what every dumb, drunk, idiot college student does when they have no money, and that's borrow. Later that night, Ooh. we set out to find ourselves a pumpkin, and wouldn't you know, within a couple blocks from the house, there sat the Cadillac of pumpkins in the middle of an unattended garden. We borrowed the pumpkin. October 28th, botany class. My instructor told us that someone had stolen his five-year-old daughter's organic pumpkin from his garden, and she's not stopped crying. Oh. I felt like a tool. October 28th, I returned the pumpkin to the garden. October 29th, knock, knock, it's the campus police. I had managed to set the dew-pasted pumpkin on the coffee table after borrowing it from the unattended garden. Oh. And my class schedule had stuck to the bottom of the pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> I returned the pumpkin and my class schedule that contained my full name and social security number to my instructor's garden. December 3rd, 1995, criminal trespass conviction, plea of no contest. Ouch. <laughs> Team Lodge. Wow. Team Lodge. That's, I think it's an automatic. You get grandfathered into Team Lodge. You, you should show them that. You're there. We want to hear your stories. Clayton on a car phone. You're on WSCR, The Score. Happy Friday, Fung. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to you. Happy Halloween. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a high school history teacher, and I thought it would be fun to dress up like a 70s guy. So I had a cream, white, leisure suit. Fake handlebar mustache, and I had Saturday Night Fever on a small recorder that would play as I'm walking around. And I thought, oh, general 70s guy. Until, at the end of the day, all the teachers said, no, we thought you were John Holmes. <laughs> Is that just a general thought or because of the costume? That's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> if they know that... Give me the address of that school. <laughs> Seriously. You know, we, we thought you might be 70s guy, and then we sort of looked at what you had going on there, and now we think you might be John Holmes. <laughs> Best to wear to stay. That was really a good movie, by the way. What? Saturday Night Fever? Really good movie. No, the John Holmes thing that was based on the John Holmes. That was good. What, Boogie Nights? That's Hollywood based. Land, right? Hollywood Land. Well, well Hollywood Boogie Nights is sort of based on his Hollywood legend Land. also. Oh, yeah. Costume, Very interesting movie. Costume mishap's a big part of this as well. Well, you, absolutely. Could getting, you possibly dress up and not have one? Getting overambitious for the costume. Now, Denver Dave in Woodstock says, I was trick-or-treating with my neighbor when we were 12, and we went to Logan Square to get candy from a bunch of retail stores on Milwaukee Avenue, and as we're going from store to store, it started to rain. So we're going to start heading home after getting quite a bit of candy, and my friend Dave decided to go across the street to the Logan Theater. As he was trying to run across the street, he was abruptly hit by a CTA bus. That's a bad night. <laughs> it was like, it's not working well for you. He said you. it was like a movie oh, scene. Gone. He was there, and then he was gone. I had no idea what to do, and I was in shock, so I started to walk home trying to figure out what to tell his mom, some friend you are, and then I heard him call out. He suffered a broken wrist and a hairline fracture of his ankle. The driver claimed he never saw him run out, and lucky for Dave, he kind of hydroplaned forward with the movement of the bus, and he wasn't run over. He's alive and well and 42 years old. You know, let me ask you this. Uh, there was something in there. I, I never realized that. You could go to a business? He was going to oh, businesses? Oh, yeah, people do that. People do they that. do? Depending on the neighborhood, sure. Some businesses stay open because it drives in store traffic. They okay. give you a little piece of candy, and maybe you come in and buy something. There are a lot of businesses. Well, see, where I grew up, there were no businesses. So, I mean, we'd have to worry about, you know, we're going to go with the, the Kreskies. Hey, come on in, kid. I liked that there used to be a Kresge's yeah, years ago. Kresge's. Yeah, I like they have a lunch counter. I don't, I don't know. I know the Rexall did. I'm, I'm old enough to Teddy remember the Rexall, to remember yeah. eating at a Kresge's lunch counter. Yeah, I, 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 seriously though, I never knew that. I never, I, I never heard anybody say to me, I went to a store to trick or treat. Tiny Burger is on Friday. Fung on the score. True Halloween horrors. Tiny oh. Burger. Hey, boys and birdie, how are you? Good show as always. Yeah, uh, coming home. Uh, from grammar school, we went to a parochial school. We're dressed, you know, the blue shirts and the ties. 
So we trick-or-treated on the way home as uh, Catholic school boys. We come to this one house that's about a block away from our house, and the guy goes, well, what are you guys dressed as? Then he steps back into the house and yells upstairs, okay. They dumped cold water on us, and it was about, uh, you know, 30 degrees outside. I, I, being a rather big guy, I wanted to go in the house. My little brother goes, no, no, Tiny, we'll get them later. So later on that night, we went around to the neighborhood, trick-or-treating with our friends, all got the pumpkins off the porches instead of smashing them in the street, went around the first floor of the house, and at my brother's whistle, every window in the house was trick-or-treated with the pumpkins. Ooh. Okay, Tiny, thank you. All right, back to the airport. By the way, Wonderland is the name of the movie. Hollywood Land's about George Wonderland, Reeves. Wonderland, yeah. So many times. There's so many lands, there's so many wonders. Right, there's so many Hollywood. But it was actually, I was not thinking that it would be a decent movie. And we have our Arminetti's winner, so please, you can... You can Stop texting! Stop texting, because we got the winner! This guy has texted in a Halloween horror. He said, just this afternoon, I answered the door. This guy was standing on my front porch, facing the street with his pants down, telling me where the Seahawks put his candy. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan Matt, you're on the score. Hello, pumpkin friends. Hello, friend. I was seven years old, and I was determined to create my own costume for the first time. So I grabbed a notebook and a trench coat, and I went as Columbo. I know. I I would ask questions. I'd leave the step and say one more question. Not all of the grown-ups got them. Some of them did, but none of my friends got them. Therefore, I was a freak. You sound like a gay. You're a freak anyway. That too. <laughs> I like the costume. I, I just got one more thing. I just, you know, you, you, you're very nice to Oh, have my God. My quick. dad used to love Columbia. I, that is, still remains one of my favorite shows I, of I all just, time. I just got one more question for you. you Without question. It's very kind with your time. But I, I just, I just have one more thing. Isn't he based on the investigator for Crime and Punishment? Yes. Yeah, he's based on Regis Philbin. He's not based on Regis Philbin. <laughs> I just have one more question. <laughs> no, Can't move my face. One more thing. I mean, you have to put Wait. it in con the context of the time when they did it. That's more like Bill Raftery investigating something. Did <laughs> <laughs> you imagine that? Bring a lunch. <laughs> Your mouth shut. I see dead people. Day two. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I love Terry. Terry Bowers, it is. They've got 900 numbers for that. See ya. Uh, who is this? What? What do you want? So I'm gonna call you tomorrow on your cellular telephone, and if you ever eat Fritos. You would know what it's like to be drunk. Goodbye. Come on! Shut up! It's Halloween. True Halloween horrors. Tom in Waukesha, Wisconsin. You're on Friday. Fung on the score. Hi, fellas. How are you doing today? Good time. Hey, listen. October October 31st, 1994. Monday Night Football. The costume was a rain gear trying to light a grill out in a Soldier Field parking lot in a pouring rain. They're not playing uh, with it. <laughs> exactly. $100 a ticket for myself and my brother. And by the end of the first quarter, the entire south end of the stadium was empty. Snow by the fourth quarter. Hypothermic. Uh, by the end of the game, trying to drink cold beer did not work. And about two inches of urine in the men's room, uh, stuffed with people trying to stay warm. While the Bears lost. In the urine? Wearing in the urine. It's <laughs> <laughs> the only warm thing I've heard so far. It, I reckon. Well, as, as the Bears lost miserably to the Packers and, and Kevin Butler in his ugly uh, Bears uniform trying to kick into a heavy north wind and saying afterwards the field is a piece of you-know-what. I remember that night. Everybody does. Every Bear fan remembers We that had a night. party that night. A party? There was a score party that night. Did you have a pinata? Not a, not my party, a score party that, was that the night. year before I joined the score. Mm -hmm. I've heard many oh, stories about that Oh, the last good year party. we had. <laughs> well, then, then the curse began. <laughs> it was the last good year we had, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was quite a night. It, uh, Doug, watching that game that night with Doug, dangerous. And, and there was that big halftime thing with Gale. Yeah, retiring numbers yep. of Butkus and Sayers. 
and then all, all the other pairs that weren't playing either that night. So, um, but where the hell were we at? We we're somewhere on the west side. I don't want to. Doug had a piece of the place, but it was crazy. The bathroom. Mike is on a car phone and on the score. Hi, Mike. Costumes, though. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mike. Uh, hey, now, real quickly, about 10 years ago, my wife and I had a Halloween party, and I, for whatever reason, decided to dress up as a hooker. I heard your statement before that Halloween is men dress up, dress up as women while I dress up as a woman hooker. Anyhow, um, I went as far as to get prostheses from a friend of ours, shop that she worked at, to fishnet stockings, to uh, shaving my mustache and beard off that I had for 12 years. And the best, well, one, of the best one of the best parts was when I got to the You're point You're a little too into I, this costume. Yeah, that's a, uh, you know... <laughs> He didn't, he didn't forget to tell you it was a Monday. Yeah, it wasn't even Halloween. I was going to say, make sure this is Halloween. So I go up to my 12-year-old daughter. I'm like, here, Kendra, do me a favor. Could you help me with my makeup? And she just looks at me with this straight face on her, on her look, and she says, Dad, I really don't want to go there. But she did help me with my makeup. But the classic was by the end of the night, two of my friends were so intoxicated that they thought I looked so good that they wanted to... All right. Oh, I think, no, I think you. they thought that before you put the costume on. <laughs> Why don't you go back to your home on Whore Island? You are a smelly you know, pirate hooker. That's the trouble with Halloween parties. Now you know why brothers stay indoors. Yeah. Are you sure they stay indoors? I'm telling you. You know, they they don't, don't, there's, there's no trick or treating. There's no roaming around, nothing. Oh, you I, take the kids out, but... As soon as nightfall hits, you stay in the house. See, that's true, because I, as I told you, in my neighborhood, when I would go to Dwight Jones's house to trick-or-treat, <laughs> he was there handing out his autograph. He wasn't out with his kids trick-or-treating. He was there. Even <laughs> Dwight Jones was not roaming around North Trail. <laughs> I'm just saying. Really? I, I, I never realized that. Because it's a dangerous place. It in, is. In North Trail. Yep. Especially, especially your house. Yeah, danger. Nothing but danger lurking in the streets just south of the Deerfield right. High School. Got to be careful out there. It's every man for himself. You know? Hey, if, if Northwestern <laughs> students could be at the museum throwing stuff good at T-Rex, yeah, anything can happen, buddy. Oh, good Lord. Stupid dinosaur! Carl Evans out there leading the way. <laughs> you don't exist! My guy. <laughs> These are fake bones! <laughs> Dang, Gina can't play. Pac-Man and Skokie, you're on the score. Hey, what's happening, guys? You! Well, here's the deal. Um, back in 2002, when I was dating my wife, she was begging me to go to a Halloween party with some of her friends that I hadn't met. I just came back from uh, living out of town, and uh, I said, what the hell, why not? I had a bad feeling, but I did it anyway. Regardless, uh, she wanted to do one of these couple things. We've seen it a million times. It never works. This time around, she wanted to be Little Red Riding Hood, and I'd be the wolf, Big Bad Wolf. Fair enough. Uh, you know, I went out. We got uh, a Moo Moo a stupid sleeping hat and glasses, and she dressed up like Little Red Riding Hood. But we go to the party, and it's, it's okay. And um, a lot of the guys are coming up to me, great, great costume. This is an awesome costume. Where'd you get it? Where'd you come up with the idea? And uh, about the fourth guy who came up to me said, Dude, that Osama Bin Laden costume is awesome. <laughs> now, now, guys, I'm Indian, okay? I'm pretty PO'd. And I'm like, what is Osama Bin Laden doing with this chick with the basket? <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 no. You're not a wolf. I'm like, look at my teeth. Like, no, no, no. That's an awesome Osama Bin Laden costume. Anyway, I end up marrying the broad, and uh, we live happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he was Indian, too. How lucky Just say, can one guy be? I'm committed to you, Pac-Man. I'm officially <laughs> committed to you as the Indian. <laughs> that was great. That is great that he's supposed to be the big bad wolf, and everybody thought he was... Dude, he's seen Bin Laden in the corner over there? <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. He must look enough like him. You know, it, it, that's great. <laughs> Well, we know he had the mustache. <laughs> what, what's with the broad and the red riding hood with the basket? I Osama pulls hot chicks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, does he get women in the cave? In the cage? <laughs> does he get women? Does he in the water? If he wants them, right? I'm like, sure Osama can get anything he wants, wherever he is. Making it rain falafel. <laughs> <laughs> You know he what? was actually, he was the one causing all the problems at the Vegas All-Star game. <laughs> <laughs> the 
the whole time he's like he's in the club and there's a predator drone like because yeah, he's like six t- seven two and me so they just like, thought it was a player tiny to make the tiny concentric circles spiraling over the club waiting for him to come out to shoot a hellfire missile damn we had a shot at him but he's over at ihop now Oh, Steve had a car Stay fire. Sorry, See, if, he was in, if he was in Vegas, you still couldn't find him. No, he's at the Luxor. <laughs> <laughs> Stand at Hooters the hotel. <laughs> I promise you they still wouldn't find him. I have to tell you that when I want this country to explode, this dead again's not bad. When, when did Osama Bin Laden turn into Drago? <laughs> It's a hard accent to do because you, you can't make him. You can't make him sound e- e- too Indian because it would be easy to do that. But it's. He, I have actually tried to do his accent and I can't do it. I, I, I would work on it more, but no one knows where he is and he no one. He doesn't send any tapes anymore. It's got like a case. Oh, there'll be one. T- I think there'll be probably the next couple Thanksgiving days. wishes coming soon. Yeah. I'm going to be doing a K-Tel ad. <laughs> For just one penny, you get this. He's doing a sham wow. <laughs> It's wrapped around his head. <laughs> he's, too, he's, he's replaced it with the sham wow. <laughs> and behind him are Amish guys making the space heaters for the cave. And furniture. <laughs> Scrubbing camels with OxyClean. <laughs> what the hell's going making on? Making mad bank on it, too. It's Friday fun. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, Steve on a car phone. You're on the score. Steve? 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 Hello? Mm. Mm. Put a Steve on a hole, go back to him. Tried Jalen and Rosemont yeah, and spinning Friday first. Score. Well, you know, I'm having a hard time keeping track of my story because you guys are making me laugh too much. <laughs> All right, Halloween 1989. Uh, my high school, I assume like some others, had a little tradition of homecoming egg wars. Uh, you know, where basically t- the junior and senior class would just basically throw eggs at each other and act like fools. Clever. Well, having, particip- having participated the year before, I was kind of sitting this one out. What high school uh, was this? Do you want to tell us? Not really, no. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, 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 no, I don't. Had you ever heard of that? An egg war? High school egg wars? Yeah. No, not formally, not a declared egg war. Oh, not yeah, in Evanston? Yeah, people... people uh, just yeah, but bought those were eggs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> people bought cartons of eggs and, and, and lit up your car. Bad times. Wait, I think, wait, I think Jalen still has a story to he tell. He does, so okay. we're sorry to interrupt him. I, I'm just curious about his egg wars. Go ahead, Jalen. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> uh, uh, didn't want to interrupt. You guys are having a good time. Uh, anyway, I was sitting this one out, and um, I was also waiting on my first batch of uh, college letters after my applications. This was my senior year. Uh, so sitting out the egg wars, I walked to my mailbox, picked up uh, the packet of mail, which included a large envelope from the University of Michigan that I was hopefully hope, hoping to get. Just about that moment, a gang of my classmates came tearing down the street, throwing eggs at each other. A few came my way, got nailed with one or two. A couple landed harmlessly on the lawn. So, of course, I picked up the ones that landed harmlessly on the lawn and returned fire. What I didn't notice as I turned around was a couple of my village's finest uh, in executing perfect trail technique on my friends. Okay. Uh, not knowing, of course, that I just walked in front of my house to get the mail and was feeling very happy about getting into the University of Michigan, uh, I was promptly arrested. Oh, did you talk your way out of it? No, because there was, like, no one around at that point. So I got taken off to the village police station when they finally unraveled the fact that I was, in fact, arrested in front of my own house getting my mail with my college acceptance in my hand. Were you waterboarded? (laughs) No, I was not waterboarded. He was later in Michigan. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Jalen. That that happened after he got to school. (laughs) Once it gets cold, there's not much to do in Ann Arbor. I think probably we... Uh, I'd never heard of it because we couldn't afford eggs when I went to high school. Um, we got one more. Let's take one more. One last one for uh, Halloween horrors. It's Optimus Prime on the score. Hello, boys. Happy Halloween. Uh, my horror story 
came when in the early 80s, I was probably in sixth grade, maybe fifth. I was of the age I could go trick-or-treating by myself. And it was back in the day where we didn't care about kids' safety and you can go out after dark, you know, those glorious days. Well, I had already finished all my trick-or-treating. I was right in front of my house about to go in, and this we had this psycho neighbor kid who, like, lived in the area, who was probably, like, maybe eighth grade. Psycho neighbor, just to say. <laughs> and he was dressed, I, I can't even tell you what I was dressed as, but he was dressed as G.I. Joe, who promptly pulled a knife up, who I thought, you know, I was a cocky little, like, you know, kid. I'm like, oh, yeah, haha, funny. Reach out, and I put my finger on the tip of the blade and cut my finger open on a fully real Rambo knife. Let's just say that that year, uh, Optimus Prime went home with no candy, but my shorts were full. So it was a fun time all around. Okay. It, you said you put your finger on the knife, though. I thought the guy was going to stab you or something. Yeah, I thought he killed him for yeah, a second. I, I, think, I think he thinks he's got a psycho neighbor. This guy put his finger on my hunting knife. Hmm, they're great together. You never had a guy invite you to touch his knife? That's why you were late coming back from the bathroom. Halloween bathroom stories of sword <laughs> fight. Yeah. Hawthorne sword fight. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it is right. Friday, we'll do it again. That'll next year. do her.